and the second poem um, is a cycle uh, is a part of a cycle when I was 25 uh, and a graduate student at Berkeley I suddenly found out that I had urgently to study another Slavic language which was a moment of panic so I decided where I want to go that was the point of kind of departure from my panic and I thought I want to go to Prague so I declared I want to do Czech I went to Prague, I spent summer there, and it was summer of 2002, which means it was the uh, summer of the Prague flood. Uh, so <laughs> Prague turned into A, Petersburg, B, Venice, which was very cool with me. Um, and uh, so it was kind of semi-dark all the time and rather wet. And I was spending time walking around with Russian poets and literati who work in Prague at the Radio Liberty. And we were wandering around, kind of, not much to do, no electricity, uh, talking constantly about what else can we talk about, Russian literature, about Marina Tsvitaeva, great Russian poet who spent beginning of her immigration in Prague, about a very interesting branch of Russian philosophy that kind of developed, well, reached its peak in Prague also, in immigration, many, many things. And when I came back, I wrote a poem uh, wandering around Prague talking about crisis of Russian culture, um, which of course is a kind of joke. The, the, a most normal anti-critical conversation is always about crisis, right? Everything is in like theater, film, poetry, they're always dying and always continuing. Um, and this is a fragment of that kind of thinking. When someone dies, it's easy to tell. Already he starts somehow to disclose it he begins pardon me to stink from his broken guts and you discover him as you do a crowd of a red head worms but he is no handful of myths he is delightfully a being and from him nails hair fangs still grow, and in him still the emptiness in the matter of the soul does not appear. On the other side of this very moment, up until the end of the end, precious dust is alive. Very, very sweet juice comes from him, sound like a trumpet, a voice of the bard, not just water. Right now, you should lick him. A few days ago, I read in a newspaper thousands of Taliban soldiers surrendered and were placed into iron trains moving through the desert. Dying, entering into madness, they licked each other, hoping to quench their thirst with sweat. Isn't that how we, glorifiers of the Russian bird, lick the proud forehead, lick the tender mouth, lick the cheeks and swollen throat to quench our desire? Get up, Lazarus. Get up. Let me touch your lips with mine. I'm shameless, I'm brave. I do what I do. I pour water over you. Over you, I whisper. I make you alive. I take you for a visit to my mom to say, Mother, here is the one I love.
когда кто-то умирает, это просто угадать. Он ведь сразу начинает как-то это не скрывать от него, пардон, душок из нарушенных кишок. И толпой плешивых грифов вы находите его. Только он не горстка мифов, он такое существо. У него еще растут ногти, волосы, клыки. У него еще пустот нет в материи души, собственно, наоборот. В самый миг конца конца, доживая, в нем живет драгоценная пыльца. Самый-самый сладкий сок выступает из него, трубный глаз, высокий слог, а не просто H2O. Вот тогда его лизни. Я читала тут на днях, тысячи боевиков Талибана сдались в плен. Их погрузили в железные контейнеры, их повезли по пустыне. Умирая, погружаясь в безумие, они лизали друг друга, надеясь потом утолить жажду. Не так ли и мы, родители русского слова, лижем, лижем гордый лоб? Лижем, лижем нежный рот, Лижем щеки, веки, зоб, Утолит желание, чтоб. Лазарь, нутка, лазарь, встань, Дай прильнуть к твоим устам. Я без ты же, я смела, У меня свои дела. Я водой окроплю, околдую, оживлю, Отведу к мамаше в гости на... Смотри, кого люблю. Вот.